Hi, it's me, Potato Plot. Welcome back to another Vienna game video. Um, today, I'll be going over the middle game for the Max Lang defense. Actually, not really. Um, it's more of a Bishop a Vienna hybrid middle game video because Max Lang defense is pretty, pretty straightforward and it almost always transitions into the uh, the Bishop game. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So, just to give you like a fresh memory, uh, fresh uh, refresher. Yeah, refresher on the on the on this opening so we're, we basically play vienna game first and then we develop our bishop when he plays uh, knight c6 and then uh, usually your opponent will play knight f6 this will mark the bishop's game uh, vienna game hy hybrid in this case i recommend a d3 and then if opponents go for a bishop you pull back takes takes and then d5 and then you take take and then queen h5 now, it is worth noting that I did make a mistake on that video, on episode 3. In this position, instead of going king, uh, wait, after this, instead of going king d1 first, uh, it is more accurate to go uh, queen takes e5, and then bishop blocks, and then going uh, king d1. So from this position, I will uh, start talking about the different ideas. Now, first of all, it is quite obvious that you are threatening the pawn on g7. However, this is easily counterable, um, I guess easily um, counterable with the simple move castle. And in this position, um, what we need to realize is that um, a lot of the pieces that for, for white is not really that developed. So what you have to do is you need to start developing your pieces, such as knight f3, and uh, you need to play on from this position. Now in the in the video opening video, I, right, I, I said that this position is completely equal. However, if we target the correct um, weaknesses, then we can potentially um, play from this specific game. Now first, let's identify some of the advantages uh, that the white has. Now first of all, white has a very, white enjoys a very nice open file, or semi-open file on the A, A file. And also it has a potentially um, a nice bishop that could come in the future. Such as, for instance, just just for example, um, let's say, yeah, like this, we can we can potentially bring out the bishop like this. Although in this position, um, black does have this move, but this is an idea. This is an idea trying to target the weak g7 pawn, and also um, we can bring out this knight in the future. Although right now it's not possible, but some I guess something like this, and yeah, this will really really weaken this a pawn here so this is another idea however this immediately i'm not really sure um but yeah that is an idea however we it doesn't mean that white's perfect here i'm not going to sugarcoat and say that this is a completely winning position for white it is worth noting that in this position white's king is extremely weak and also black has the bishop pair meaning that um White can easily mobilize its forces and try to come get black. And also, in addition to that, black king's completely safe here. So, although we do, although I did tell you that uh, white does have some initiative, um, in a completely objective perspective, black's completely fine. And with the bishop pair, I will say in the practical point of view, black may be even slightly better. However, after knight f3 uh, and bishop e6, very natural developing move. I think that after bishop d2 and trying to target this and after all that stuff and just casually developing, I think I think this should be a very, very uh, playable position for, um, for white. So very simple ideas here. So nothing difficult here, right? So we're just trying to... Develop our pieces, try to target their weak pawns, and uh, I mean, try to target their weaknesses, and that is how we're going to play this position. So now that we looked at the move knight a5, let's look at what will happen at knight c6, in the middle game of knight c6. I think I actually ended the opening video at this specific position, um, but actually there's more to the opening than the, than the segment that I released. And today I'll go over the three three opening moves, and then I'll go over, and then in addition to that, I'll go over some of the middle game ideas in those positions. So think of this as like episode two of the opening video. Uh, yeah, so think of it as a sequel to episode three, basically. So in this position, um, we need to identify some of the 
bad sides of black and some of the ideas of black. So first, we know that uh, black has a very, very... Uh, black can develop its bishop. Next, we know that this dark side bishop's clo uh, pretty much stuck, and only place it can go is either here or kind of Genkedo, which makes no sense to me at all. And black has the very, very nice idea of going knight a5 and switching out our um, light squared bishop for the knight. So we know those are the ideas here. So, using, using what I said, there are four different, uh, there are three different moves that you can basically play in this position. And the first one is a3. a3 is one of the most important moves in this, and it's actually the end, top engine move. And it is because it kind of, uh, it, it completely negates uh, knight a5, because you can go back to a3. Now you may say, oh, potato play, but can't you just play uh, bishop e6? The answer is actually no, because you have to move knight d5. Now it looks like knight d5 just runs into uh, c6, but this is not the case, because you actually can take with check, and after, I guess, let's, let's take with the queen, because why not? And we can trade the bishops here, and then you can play the move uh, b5, effectively trapping the knight and let's say he takes with the queen you still play b5 trapping the knight so that's why um a3 is such a powerful move in this position because it can you, you can basically kind of trap him so it's it's a viable i think i think playing trap chess although although lots of uh, i guess masters says trap chess is not real chess like hope chess is not real real chess but part of opening preparation is hope chess, right? So I think I think we can play that move. And also, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, I think I, I went over this move in the opening video as well. Um, you can play knight d5 here anyways. So it's perfectly fine to play a3, I think, in this position. And I, I, in most of my games, I actually do play a3 as well. So this is my prime recommendation. And, and let's say, uh, let's say he kind of develops, then you play the move knight g e2. Very, very important that you develop it here rather than here, because if you develop it to f3, I think I mentioned the previous opening video as well, it, it, you, you kind of run into this pin, and it's just really not pleasant at all. So knight g e2, so that if he plays this, you can always play f3, and then um, after castle, you castle, now you prepare f4. Now you prepare f4. Now on this note, I will talk about the move f4 in this position and talk about the difference between going a3 and then going f4 later and just going f4 immediately. So f4 immediately has the problem of, um, there, are, there are actually a few problems. One of the main problem is the move knight a5. Now the move knight a5 is a problem once again because you, you have to concede your light squared bishop and after lots of trades, um, at or at the end game, the there could be a situation where your opponent has the bishop pair while you don't have the bishop pair. So because that's the number one reason. And the second reason is that attack on the king side. Uh, when you're attacking on the king side, your light square bishop kind of becomes a very important factor, because uh, as we saw in the earlier position, yeah. For instance, like this. Uh, in this case, like his. His king is, this pawn is pinned to the king, because if this pawn after ever, ever captures something here, then the king will be lost. So, in the case of attacking ideas as well, it is very important to have the light squared bishop. So, that's why, that's why in the case where we actually play f4 immediately, uh, that's why in the case where we play f4 immediately, right here, um, we run into this, and then we have to concede our light square bishop. However, this is no biggie. We go back here, and then we kind of transposition into something similar to what we saw at first, like in the earlier part of this video. But the difference is that he doesn't have d5 now, and we have an f4. That's the difference. But in this case, uh, in a lot of cases, your opponent will take, and then after taking with the bishop, and then uh, castles, castles, I think white should be better in this position because we have the really nice uh, f file and then we can always bring out the queen as well. So those are the some of the differences. 
if you play a3, you can use the light square bishop to attack. But if you don't, you have to concede that, and then you have to attack with what you have here. Now, the engine evaluates this position as 0 0.3, uh, which is slight, I guess, I guess similar to the previous position. But in my personal opinion, and, and, the, and based on the games that I have played before, this is actually slightly more difficult to play than with the light squared bishop. Because with the light squared bishop, black has to commit at least a tempo to playing h8 in the future. But in this case, you don't. And also, there's like a, I guess, I guess kind of like a pawn break idea where you take and then let's say, mm, just for instance, just for instance, uh, this, this is just a hypothetical position. Let's say like this, black can actually play this move. And it's very annoying because you have to use this tempo to kind of move back and then black's pieces suddenly comes to life. So like, and also Fiankedo is an option here. So instead of opening the F diagonal or, or this dark, dark square diagonal on the on this F side, I think it might be worse better. I, I, I think it, it may be worthwhile to just invest the tempo in playing A3 and then just negating all this uh, counterplay situation. So that's, that's my personal uh, recommendation. And the last one is the one that I least recommend. It's actually knight g to e2. Apparently, it's the second most played move on me chess, but I don't recommend this because, again, you kind of have to concede your bishop. And I, I feel like this is just the worst version of, of this. Uh, I think it's just the worst version of this. Like... According to the engine, though, um, or yeah, according to the engine, though, you just go back. Wait. Okay, not the engine, but according to Leeches, though, a lot of people have succeeded in this opening by just castling him. So it's kind of wishy washy. So if you take here, you kind of take, and then you kind of control the light squares with your pawns. So, and, and you're and you have your dark square bishop. So I guess in that matter, it's totally fine. But for me, as I said, this light square bishop can be a killer in the future. So I don't think it's worth swapping it. That's why I would recommend a3 in this position. Now, finally, as a case study, I'm going to go over a game between Grandmaster Postni Ev Evgeny with, what was his name? With Nabati T. You can check this game on Lee Chess, um, Lee Chess database. So if you want to look at it, follow along, feel free to. And sorry for butchering their names. So first, um, obviously they're they're gonna play the Vienna. What what we're playing because that's the point of this video, right? To to go over the games in this position. So after d6, um, our hero here uh, plays a3. Now a3 is a very important move here, obviously, as I said. And um, after bishop e7, uh, knight g2, and then castles, castles, we come to the position that we really looked at. Now, there are multiple games here. Uh, it's actually three different games, top level master games that uh, that was played in this specific position. And white won three out of four, uh, four masters game, according to the Leech's database. So it's a pretty solid, pretty solid, um, I guess, uh, position here. And... After bishop e6, uh, knight d5 was played, uh, the move that I have recommended. And actually, um, the game that we're going to follow here today, the Grandmaster decided to reroute the knight because, again, the knight's absolutely doing nothing there. So, like, reroute this knight because it's doing nothing because only place it can go is there, but you can always retreat. We went over this. Uh, went back, and then uh, our... our um, our white player, or the player in the white piece, uh, decide to go uh, rotate the knight, and we reach this position that we know very well. Uh, now, as you can see, it looks it looks completely winning for white in this position, at least for me, because uh, black's pieces are all not developed, um, but white pieces, it's quite clear how it's gonna develop. So I like, like I think it will be easier to play as white here. Now in this position, it is worth noting that just shoving the pawn down, or either I think trade as well, even maybe. 
actually yeah even the ancient engine is quite unsure about how to proceed the attack but uh, in the game uh, queen f3 was played a very common idea trying to stack up on the f file and trying to apply pressure on this pawn um, f5 and yeah and then just continuing the attack on the king's side and just just constantly pushing the pawns now in this case uh, you should not be afraid to kind of like push your pawns to open up the position because uh, one one cool idea one attacking idea that we have to know then here is that actually black decides to go for the attack first but we kind of undermine this entire weakness by playing by pushing this pawn to h4 and you can't really take because that kind of opens up this entire thing and it becomes very scary and you kind of have to reinforce this but eventually you can have idea of cracking this open right like yeah starting to chip away this entire position so yeah it's, it's really not that clear for black in this case now taking seems more natural but yeah take takes takes and uh white actually blunders in this in this situation but what what the attack could have been here is going a uh, queen h5 and then after b6 trying to tra trade this once again see even the engine knows this light squared bishop is very ter very scary after bishop b3 targeting this uh white has a very scary attack coming so to pr to proceed this is actually quite difficult because objectively the the position is completely equal but if you look at it from a practical standpoint isn't this completely like scary for black at, at least i think it's very scary for black because like the king's completely exposed although white's king is also exposed but it's really well protected by its pieces and but for black pieces like only these 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 highly overextended pawns are the only thing that's kind of protecting the black's king here so it just feels like after cracking this open why should have a perfect perfect game like should should be fine so uh i, I will share this game on the link below um but um i think this was a very interesting game i think this was a very interesting game. and i think it's a really good case study that really highlights um what kind of attack you can get from um the recommendations that i have given you so explore it on leeches and i would like to apologize uh for procrastinating for such a long time um i i know i know it's been like months but i've been busy and i'm sorry but i'll try to push as much video as possible before the next semester start but regardless thank you guys for watching and next video will be on how to deal with being a game as black. So how to fight against being a game as black. I think a lot of you guys will find it interesting because um, there are some of the Vienna lines that I haven't shown you yet. But with the black video, I think I will go over all of them. So um, it will be interesting. It will be interesting. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.